I think the first thing that comes to mind when I think of the PS4 and Xbox One era is all of the games that released in just a totally busted state. Don't get me wrong, broken games have existed since long before the PS4 and X-Bone. Uh, shout out Superman 64. H Hi Clark, how are ya? Good to see ya. Haven't seen ya since college when you lasered that professor. But there definitely weren't nearly as many big budget AAA busters. You know, big rigs is barely comprehensible, but that game was made by one man in a pond, not a giant AAA Megatron. Back in the prehistoric days of the Xbox 360 and PS3, downloading an update to fix issues or add stuff to your disc-based game after its release was like a fairly new concept, but like an actually pretty cool concept. Wait, so the interweb can make my already legendary game even more legendary by downloading this epic Chuck Morse update? <laughs> pretty like a boss. I see no way this could ever end badly for the consumer. It is 2007. I just saw Michael Clayton. But nowadays, the disc inside that case you just bought is practically dead oh. weight the second you've installed the game and downloaded the likely necessary giant update full of fixes not included on the disc. Because the disc was actually manufactured months prior to the game's set release date, and the developers kept working on stuff during that time, likely because the publisher set the release date way too early and were just like, it's fine. Everyone has the internet. You You'll fix it in time, just never stop working. You don't have to see your family. Your family is dumb. Your families are literally the cringiest idiots I've ever seen. Why do you want to go home to them? Ooh, goofy. Your family? L. The disc may as well just be a doctor's note that tells your PS4, yes, my son actually does own the game now. Go ahead and give him the necessary day one flu shot. Oh my God, it's 87 gigabytes. Fallout 76 didn't even actually come with a disc, so you actually just got a cool new blue coaster for your psychotic Reddit dungeon. Basically, if you don't have internet access nowadays as a gamer, you're screwed. But my goal with this video isn't just to be like, wow, things used to be better back in the day and now they're all bad, grr, because it's not that simple or true. Big budget, broken video games exist for a lot of reasons. The first one being, making video games is just really, really hard. I have been openly critical of many big budget AAA games on this channel, but I hope that I have always made one thing very Crystal Pepsi clear. A lot of very talented people work very hard for very long, crunchy Nature Valley hours to make even seemingly simple stuff like this possible and it's crazy. And in order for a game to be even considered pretty good by the general public, gameplay, sound, story, characters, performance, all of these things have to perfectly align in the in the nights in the gamer night sky. Obviously, modern technology has made creating virtual worlds a lot easier than it was back in the 80s or 90s. And I think we often take that for granted. We've come a long way from the days where 3D was a bit more of a fluid abstract concept like jazz and you aimed a gun with the same finger you drove James Bond with. But with better tools and better hardware comes bigger projects with bigger budgets, with bigger teams, with bigger lists of bigger problems that your big ass better fix with your big tractor. And if you've ever been hanging out with a big group, you know that even doing something as simple as deciding where to go for dinner can quickly become a f***ing boss fight. Especially when your friend's mom who's paying for the dinner has all these crappy dinner demands because she's trying to satisfy her dinner shareholders. This metaphor is getting a little goofy. I think you get the point. I know half of you are just thinking about Michael Clayton still. So I think the first obvious reason for AAA games releasing in a broken state is that game development is just insanely hard and requires so much dedicated collaboration and efficient time management. And it's a miracle that any video game ever gets finished and is even exists at all. And all video games should go to heaven. The second reason is... <laughs> <laughs> okay, buddy, that's enough out of you. Hi, I'm Jakey, Jakey, and Jakey, Attorney Outlaw. And I'm here to tell you about today's video sponsor, PayPal Honey. Honey is a free online shopping tool that automatically searches for promo codes at checkout, like a little deal detective, so that you don't have to. Honey works for so many things. Things that you're probably already buying, like shoes or chairs, on websites that you're probably already shopping on. And did I mention that it's completely free? Hey, no objections over here. <laughs> Sustained and overruled. Shit. Anytime you see your little dancing detective up here, just click apply coupons and let little shorty do his thing and try to save you some money. Dang. I recently needed a new lawyer briefcase because my previous one was covered in so much mud for reasons I'm not at liberty to say. So naturally, I looked online for a cute new backpack that I could take into the courtroom and Honey found a coupon that's for it and gone. Whether you use Google Chrome, Opera, Firefox, Safari, 
or for whatever reason, Microsoft Edge, you can add Honey to your browser for free by going to joinhoney.com forward slash nakyjake. Using my special link helps the channel and is greatly appreciated by all of the attorneys here at Jakey, Jakey, and Jakey, and Jakey, and Jakey, and Jakey, and Jakey. Thank you to Honey for sponsoring this video and now let's get on back to this episode of Nabo Jabo in the age of Michael Clayton. As most of you in the audience know, new video games sell around $60 or I guess now $70 on PS5 and Xbox Series S, X, Y, the f did they call them that? And it's been around that $50 to $60 price point for a while, even though AAA games take way longer to make now and have way bigger budgets than back in the day when I was star quarterback. So because of all that, and also inflation, in some cases, it's kind of a steal to get a game like Elden Ring for only 60 bucks when Eternal Ring was 50 bucks 23 years ago. And the swords in that game are tiny. They're not nearly as girthy or as long as Elden Ring. You go, in, you go out in public with that shrinking ink? I'll kick your ass! Donkey Online has a really good video about video game pricing that you should go watch later, but not right now. If you leave, you won't see how I learned how to spin. I'm gonna spin later. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna wanna see that. So if you're a company whose main priority at the end of the day is just to generate as much profit as humanly possible, why not cut a few corners, you know? Assuming that your reputation isn't all that important to you. Because if it's a choice between A, spending millions of dollars for every month that you lengthen development time to ensure that you release a relatively bug-free and finished product, and hope it eventually pays off because lots of people recognize that it's good quality and buy it and sing your praises and you win awards at the big show and Jeff goes, oh man, your game is so big, it's the biggest game I've ever seen, dude. Which is all a very big gamble. Or B, set a very unrealistic release date that you know damn well you will not make and force your team to crunch their asses off only to still release a broken game that you'll maybe eventually fix with a giant update long after release and after you've already made all your money. And to make sure you definitely see a return on your giant investment and satisfy your investors, you do all these pre-order bonuses and fancy trailers with celebrities just to guarantee that people buy your game before gamers can even know that the game is busted as hell because you've also made it so that no publication can drop a review for the game until the day the game comes out which should be illegal. Yeah, if the only thing you care about is sales in your quarterly reports, you're definitely planting at bombsite B. Just like Ubisoft and EA and Bethesda and Square Enix and Activision and CD Projekt Red and Microsoft like several times. You very rarely see Sony or Nintendo or Rockstar publish a big, broken, unfinished mess because they know that their reputation is a big reason people purchase games that have their cute little sexy logos in the corner. The Last of Us Part II, Ghost of Tsushima, Spider-Man, God of War, all of these Sony exclusives released in relatively bug-free and complete states. And, well, Days Gone was iffy, but we don't have to talk about Days Gone. Yeah, I, I, I said your name, sweet. Now go back to bed, okay? Doesn't mean that those devs didn't have to crunch like hell to reach the finish line. No, unfortunately, crunch is a huge problem across the entire industry. And even Golden Girl publishers and developers like Sony and Naughty Dog aren't exceptions to that. It's still very much not ideal. But apparently, even Golden Girls like Nintendo or Rockstar, companies with some of the highest rated games of all time under their championship belt, they push site B too! It's B! Rush B! Rotate B! Rotate B! The GTA Definitive Trilogy was one of the most appalling and disappointing re-releases of a beloved franchise that the world has ever seen. And this is Rockstar, the company that put out this game, and this game, and this game, and this game. And fuck it, even this game is amazing. And you know money isn't tight with how much of a cash cow GTA 5 continues to be 10 years later. Like, this isn't an indie publisher rushing out Hog Simulator 3 because they're strapped for cash after their Kickstarter failed. No, this is Rockstar. They, it's just greed. I don't know if it falls on Rockstar or their parent company Take Two, but at some point, someone or someone's somewhere said, fuck it, we'll do, do it live. live. And Nintendo, they just published the two lowest rated mainline Pokemon games to ever exist. Games now famous online for their hilarious bugs. And I ain't talking about Caterpie. And even if there's a fun game buried underneath all the bugs, it should be illegal to advertise and sell a product in this state. And that brings me to my final reason that I think broken AAA games will continue to exist. 
you. I touched on this in my ads and video games video, but oh my god, stop pre-ordering games. That's why these companies keep promising to serve you hot lunch square pizza and then go psych your game slot! Because they know the average consumer is gullible as hell and overly trusting and super loyal to their favorite thing, and they prey on those sensibilities to make sure that your money ends up in their pocket. And it does. Every single time. Pokemon was busted as hell and still sold 20 million copies. It's like serious gamer Stockholm syndrome where people will watch a pre-release review for a game like Dying Light 2 on IGN or GameSpot and defend the game like their fucking life depends on it even though they haven't even played it yet. Okay guys, but remember, this is without the day one patch and we all know those usually fix everything. <laughs> you can't spell ignorant without IGN or ants. And even months after the damage is done and a broken product has sold millions of copies because apparently gamers have toasters for brains. People in the comments will once again applaud and defend companies like EA or CD Projekt Red for sticking with their game and fixing it long after release, which it's like, I guess that deserves some level of praise, maybe? You know what I mean? It's like you buy a taco for the full price because you were advertised a full taco on the fucking taco screen. And when you get that taco, you open up the greasy paper just to see a busted ass half taco shell with only beans on it. It's only beans. Oops, all beans. And then six months later, a Taco Bell employee rings your doorbell and gives you the other half of that busted taco that still doesn't have all the meat on it that they promised. And your response is to start clapping? Like, <laughs> what the f And don't get me wrong, definitely throw love to the hardworking individual devs that actually got in the crunchy taco shell trenches and coated this broken mess back together. But give zero f***ing credit to the shitty overlord Taco Bell EA Corporation responsible for that broken taco that you paid full price for in the first place. God damn it, I need a taco or at least a, a churro to the throat. <laughs> God. A lot of initially broken games can eventually blossom into really good ones like No Man's Sky, Master Chief Collection, Final Fantasy XIV was like completely reborn, pun intended, and people love it now and that's awesome. But this cycle will repeat as long as gamers continue to buy games and pre-order games before even knowing if it runs as well as the pudding on their treadmill. The only possible change starts with you and what you choose to spend your money on. Otherwise, we're just gonna keep getting anthems shoved into our ant holes. But you know what they say, you can't spell Nakey Jakey with without Jane or, or, Ke or Kevin. I'm gonna start uploading more stuff to Jaquan the Jequel, so if you wanna go subscribe to my twin, you can get some indie slop in between my AAA prestige exclusive DLC Nakey content. Thank you to Honey and Jakey Jakey and Jakey Attorneys at Law for sponsoring this video. Get at me on Instagram or Twitter or don't. I can't enforce that as I am not your legal guardian and I'll see you next time on The Gamer Wars. It's good to be back. I'm excited. I'm, I got more videos in the in the works. I don't know why I always get more candid and sincere right at the end, but anyways, it's good to be back. Gamers forever. <laughs>